Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali McGavel. In this video, we cover system noise power. This is a continuation for our understanding of the link budget analysis problem. So in this video, we'll cover the following outlines, the following topics, carrier to noise ratio, system noise power and temperature, thermal noise power, noise spectral density, system figure of merit, and multi-bounce link. So let's start with the first one. The carrier to noise ratio. Uh, so far we have been dealing with amount of power received. The carrier to noise ratio, the ratio between the carrier to the noise, is an important factor. We refer to this as C divided by N or C over N. Carrier to noise. Of course, usually you want this quantity to be large because the carrier power is in the is a numerator while the noise is in the denominator. C over N give you the ratio between carrier over noise power at in terms of how or, or, or the amount of carrier to noise ratio in the receiver bandwidth. And the unit used is usually dB. It's a very important quantity. It's used for calculations if you know how much is the bandwidth of at the receiver. And it tells you the margin, how much is the required signal to noise ratio for a desired signal type, or how much margin you have, how much extra you have in terms of carrier to noise ratio, how much far you can go. Another quantity which is not C over N, it's rather C over N naught. It's the carrier power divided by the noise power spectral density. And the unit for that will be dB Hertz. So why are we doing this? Why don't we just take C over N? Why over C, C over N naught? If you don't know the bandwidth of the receiver and you want it function of N naught, because this is power spectral density, allows for simple calculation of the allowable receiver bandwidth, so you can vary the bandwidth, for a given required C over N. Okay, and this is also critical for calculations involving carrier recovery loop, and um, this quantity is very important for circuits which rec which recover the carrier. So remember we have C over N and most likely we use C over N naught. This would be different unit and this is if the bandwidth is known this is for varying bandwidth. System noise power and temperature. The system noise power uh, and temperature they are related to each other. So we represent the noise power and we relate it to temperature. The performance of the system is determined by how much carrier to noise ratio you have. So in the denominator, there is this noise. We want to know the relation between noise and temperature. The advantage of knowing the carrier to noise ratio is it will allow you to find the bit error rate, the probability of error, bit error rate. How many bits are in error? Bit error rate, the probability of error and the bits. And this is, of course, important for digital systems. And as a user, you want to know that the BER is relatively small. Usually in most of the systems, we want to guarantee that the carrier power is more than the noise power by at least 10 dB, by at least 10 times. So this is usually the threshold. Of course, it varies from one application to another. So uh, to find the required carrier power, you need to know how much noise are there. And noise is related to the temperature of the system. Whether you use N or P sub N, this is the noise power. Okay, so these are two ways of setting the same thing. Um, quick review of basic um, temperature measurements. I know that we have Kelvin, Fahrenheit, and Centigrade, uh, or degrees Celsius. So these are the relations. So the temperature in Kelvin is related to um, the, the temperature in, in degrees Celsius plus 273 and you can also replace the temperature in Celsius with its equivalent in Fahrenheit. Remember that Tn is the noise temperature and it's by default measured in Kelvin in our case and of course the, the Kelvin is ab abbreviated as with a symbol K. Thermal noise power. For the case of uh, thermal noise board, the system noise is caused by thermal sources, and we can classify them in the two, 
external to the system or internal. The external to the system include transmitted noise on the link coming from outside and also seen noise, what we have around us in the scene, noise observed by the antenna, whatever can get to the antenna from outside. For the second type of noise, we have also the internal to the, to the receiver, comes from inside the receiver, from the circuit of the receiver, it's not coming from outside. So we can relate the noise power with the temperature by the following relation. The power available from thermal noise N equal to K, where K is the Boltzmann constant. Okay, you don't have to remember this, but we can write it in normal format or in, in dB scale, J, uh, joules per Kelvin, or we can, we can write it as dB watts per Kelvin per Hertz. dB watts, no watts and, and Hertz will relate to the, to the joules because watts are joules per second and hertz is one over seconds so we have the following relation and of course the power is, is measured in watts or in db scale it would be db watts and most of our analysis will, will be using the db scale so the noise power equal to k times t is which is the temperature of the system noise or the system noise temperature times b which is the effective system bandwidth increasing bandwidth increasing temperature are both reasons for increasing the noise power this is why we, we love to filter and only keep the minimum required bandwidth noise spectral density uh, noise is measured in watts if you divide by b you get n naught so what's n naught it's the noise spectral density density of noise power per hertz so this is watts divided by b and n naught is usually given by n divided by b if you go back to our equation substitute for n k times t s times b b will cancel out and you get k, k times t so the noise spectral density is just function of of the temperature of the system noise and of course k is just a constant in most of the cases the noise is spectral density is constant up to very high frequency and this is why we call we call it white noise because if you know, you know colors are different frequencies the white color has all similar why the white color is made of all similar uh, other colors if you combine all colors you get the white color and this is why if we have constant power spectral density we call it white noise white because it includes all frequencies and in practice it's it's constant up to three uh, 300 gigahertz which is a very high frequency so this is why we just call it white noise uh, remember that all bodies generate microwave energy if they have non-zero kelvin so basically we cannot bring things to, to absolute uh, zero kelvin so we expect bodies to generate microwave energy thermal noise another important thing that we need to keep in our mind is what we call the system figure of minute so what does what is that if you will go back to the to the carrier to noise ratio this equation okay is if you recall this equation is for the carrier power power transmitted that times antenna gain at the transmitter times antenna gain at the receiver and then you divide by the path loss or multiply by the inverse of the path loss that will give you the carrier power now what we do here is to find the carrier to noise ratio we are divided dividing by the noise uh, power which is this part here this is n all right so this translate to this 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 guy is this and now for the carrier it's everything else so you can think of all of this now uh, if you notice here i mark this I mark these two guys with, with, with the red color. Why? Because they are kind of function of the receiver. So if we collect these two terms on the side, and now everything else here remains, the bandwidth, whatever, you'll find out that we can use this uh, to reflect the impact of the receiver because this is the gain of the antenna at the receiver, and this is the temperature of the, uh, of the receiver system. So G, of, G over T, uh, which is our, the antenna gain divided by system temperature is referred to as a system figure of minute 
and the unit for that is usually db per kelvin and it, it it's as advantage as i mentioned it it represent or describe the sensitivity of the receiver system so if you want to have a good receiver you either increase g or decrease t others other parameters are not function of the receiver the the figure of minute must be um, must be uh, used with caution because they change according to the condition so if you want to buy a receiver and they give you a very good figure of merit then you have to be careful because they might measure this under ideal condition under realistic conditions like if we have rain the g over t s uh, would degrade for most of the systems and this is caused by the increase on sky noise for example or, or atmosphere it's also uh, it's also uh, is affected by the loss in the flux density because of whatever uh, uh, material used or, or medium at the receiver side. So in this slide, we have collected the term that relates to the receiver, and we call it the figure of minute, which is gr divided by ts. We can conclude here with the, with the with multi bounce link budget. If you are if you find c over n and for link number one shown here in blue and then you find for another link which is c over n let's call it two the carrier to noise ratio and you are interested in knowing the, the overall carrier to noise ratio so we can use this relation c over n total it depends on how many links you have okay so the carrier to noise ratio for each stage Okay, if they, if they are known, we can use the following relation like um, resistance in parallel to find the overall, like in the case of linear bent pipe transponder link. So we have one transponder, trans receiver, and then we have like in, sat in satellite or relays, you transmit your signal to an intermediate link, and then it, it continues. Like we use this at, at home for, for example, for uh, some applications to extend the range of communication systems. This is true, of course, with an assumption. We're not going to go deep, but of course, that we assume that the noise are uncorrelated. Noise here is different than the noise here, because if they are related, then we, ha we have to have a special uh, relation. If they are unrelated, then we, have, we can have the following relation. We just flip and add, and then invert the entire thing. It's just like uh, resistances in parallel. We can apply this to the bit error rate, so if you know the probability of error here, the probability of error here, the bit error rate, bit error rate one, two, and so on, we can for the total we can just add them assuming that the noise are uncorrelated. Because we are assuming that these errors are not related, otherwise they could um, we could have an, a different expression. Again, this kind of symbol expectation or estimation to what happens if you have multi links, multi hubs. You, you go from the MAM to Riyadh, Riyadh to Jeddah, Jeddah to Mecca, and so on. So you go from over different links. Now, uh, we have seen in this presentation that we focused on the noise. But before we proceed with the link budget, I'd like to remind you that we are doing this for the link budget analysis. And I'd like you to recall that when it comes to the receive power, there are different parameters that we have to worry about. These parameters include uh, path loss include um, uh, loss proportional to atmospheric proportional to frequency we have to also to worry about the gain of the receiver the gain of the transmitter uh, we can control the dimension of the and the wavelength and from this power we have we get the carrier to noise ratio if you want to design a system then you have to think about all these parameters at the same time or even if you want to analyze a system. Do we decrease control the bandwidth, the temperature, lambda d? The relation is simple, but has lots of trade-offs. So when, if you want to go deep into what causes the noise in, uh, in a receiver, then we have to consider the RF stage, intermediate frequency stage, and, uh, the, uh, and other stuff related to the receiver, but this is beyond our, our scope. At this stage, we just want to know that 
the, the, the noise temperature, the noise at the receiver could be caused by the different stages within the receiver, whether we have the the RF stage or intermediate stage or whatever stage you have at uh, the antenna of the receiver. Okay, so um, we'll continue with this in the coming video. So please watch for our coming videos. Thank you for being good listeners.